Chapter 8. The Word. J. The Power of the Spoken Word. Text. John chapter 14 verses 1 to 31. Let not your heart be troubled, ye believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions, if it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place, for you. And if I go and prepare a place, for you, I will come again, and receive you unto myself, that, where I am, there ye may be also. And whither I go ye know, and the way ye know. Thomas said unto him, Lord, we know not whither thou goest, and how can we know the way? Jesus said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life, no man cometh unto the Father, but by me. If ye had known me, ye should have known my Father also, and from henceforth ye know him, and have seen him. Philip said unto him, Lord, show us the Father, and it's a this of us. Jesus said unto him, Have I been so long time with you, and yet hast thou not known me, Philip? He that hath seen me hath seen the Father, and how sayest thou then, show us the Father? Believest thou not that I am in the Father, and the Father in me? The words that I speak unto you I speak not of myself, but the Father that dwelleth in me, he doeth the works. Believe me that I am in the Father, and the Father in me, or else believe me for the very works' sake. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me, the works that I do shall he do also, and greater works than these shall he do, because I go unto my Father. And whatsoever ye shall ask in my name, that will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If ye shall ask anything in my name, I will do it. If ye love me, keep my commandments. And I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another Comforter, that he may abide with you forever, even the Spirit of Truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him, but ye know him, for he dwelleth with you, and shall be in you. I will not leave you comfortless, I will come to you. Yet a little, while, and the world seeth me no more, but ye see me, because I live, ye shall live also. At that day ye shall know, that I am in my Father, and ye in me, and I in you. He that hath my commandments, and keepeth them, he it is that loveth me, and he that loveth me shall be loved of my Father, and I will love him, and will manifest myself to him. Judas said unto him, Not I scare it, Lord, how is it that thou wilt manifest thyself unto us, and not unto the world? Jesus answered and said unto him, If a man love me, he will keep my words, and my father will love him, and we will come unto him, and make our abode with him. He that loveth me not keepeth not my sayings, and the word which ye hear is not mine, but the father's which sent me. These things have I spoken unto you, being yet present with you. But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things, and bring all things to your remembrance, whatsoever I have said unto you. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give unto you, not as the world giveth, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Ye have heard, how I said unto you, I go away, and come again unto you. If ye love me, ye would rejoice, because I said, I go unto the Father, for my Father is greater than I. And now I have told you before it come to pass, that, when it is come to pass, ye might believe. Hereafter I will not talk much with you, for the Prince of this world cometh, and hath nothing in me. But that the world may know, that I love the Father, and as the Father gave me commandment, even so I do. Arise, let us go hence. Why baptize again? Leader Alambro Alambro says that baptism by immersion shall remain forever. When you are dipped in water by way of baptism, it means you are buried with Christ, and when you emerge, you are emerging with life. There is no other way one can be saved, except he slash she is born of water, blood and spirit. It was said that water and blood shall gush out of his side. It also came to pass. The fulfillment of these prophecies proved him as Christ. It should be noted that, if the water and blood did not pass out of his side, our iniquities could not have been washed away. The death of Christ has therefore left a fountain of water whereby we all bathe for the remission of our sins. It may be interesting to note that it was also for this reason that John the Baptist was asked to baptize with water. Baptism in Brotherhood of the Cross and Star is completely different from what the churches and cults do all over the world. For this reason one must be baptized again into Brotherhood of the Cross and Star, though one may have been baptized several times elsewhere. Here you must confess and repent of all your sins before baptism. 
Once you confess and repent, and you are baptized, you have become a different person. Your salvation year starts the very day you are baptized. This is so, because you are first given the words of God before your confession. Without passing through this way, you are wasting your time. That is, why the churches are now empty. They do not pass through the right way to God and so they scatter, because of not having received the Holy Spirit, they have no life. The indivisible whole. The main thrust of our lesson today is contained in verses 9 to 11 of the above Bible text. But before we start, let me task your brains a little. Who is our Lord Jesus Christ? Whom do you think God is, and who is the Holy Spirit? I know that most cannot attempt to answer these questions, because they lack the understanding. Sequel to the three verses above, when Philip demanded Christ to show him the Father, Christ in response asked him, if till then he had not seen the Father. Christ further stressed that he is in the Father and the Father is in him and that he speaks not out of his own volition, but through the directives of the Father. In the same vein, all the works done here and the words spoken here in this kingdom are respectively done and spoken by the Father. If you are now conscious of this very fact, what stops you from believing in the works done by the Father? Now read John chapter 10 verse 30, I and my Father are one. The above Bible portion has made it clear that Christ and the Father are one. However it is surprising that opinions still vary as to who God, Christ, and the Holy Spirit are. Some say that Christ is the Son of God, the mouthpiece of God etc. They also give different views to who God and the Holy Spirit are. But the question is, if they are different, why did Christ say that he and the Father are one? In fact the way you approach this issue depicts that you understand the three beings to be separate entities. As a final proof of the matter, read John chapter 1 verses 1 to 4. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him, and without Him was not anything made that was made. For in Him was life, and the life was the light of men. All that I have for you in this lecture is to make you conscious of the fact that the Holy Spirit, God and Christ are one, they are all in all things. The next related question to be treated is, have the whites ever manufactured the word? In the entire world, have you ever seen a person who manufactures the word? The answer is no. This is an indication that Christ, God and the Holy Spirit constitute the word the final cause of all things. God is the word. That is why once a person no longer has the word, God, in him he dies. But so long as God, the word is in you, you will continue to live. In other words the person with the word, God, in him cannot be termed dead, because he can communicate with words. God is the word, and the word is God. This explains why our Lord Jesus Christ told Philip, I have been so long time with you, and yet hast thou not known me, Philip? He that hath seen me hath seen the Father, and how sayest thou then, show us the Father? John chapter 14 verse 9. This is a proof that once you are seen, the word, God, is equally seen. The word is God. While in the court, God is the Lord there. In school, God is the greatest teacher. In the battlefield, he is the greatest commander. In everything you do, God is at the head. And since the word is always with you, it is correct to say that you and the Father are one. But once he, the word, departs from you, you become useless. But if at that spot you are prayed for and the psalm, God, Father, send down thy power, for thy children have come, is son, the word comes back to you and you again become back to life. All the things contained in the Bible from Genesis to Revelation are the spoken words of our Lord Jesus Christ. And all the works accomplished on earth today are the handiwork of God through the spoken word. Every name that is attached to different people has special meanings and significance. For instance, as Jesus is said to mean Savior, Asuko, Bello, Deo, Ngozi, Emilia etc. have their special meanings and significance. So God is no other thing but the Word. The Word is life. Power, Spirit, Truth, Christ, etc. Other than the Word, there is nothing else in existence. And man cannot on his own make use of the Word, rather it is God in the person who speaks every word that proceeds from him. Also, the songs that you sing are sung by God. But following man's level of foolishness, he erroneously claims to be the speaker and singer of the words respectively that come out of his mouth. Is it true that you have ever done anything by yourself? What can one's hands do as well as legs, eyes, ears, nose, etc.? 
the word that is being preached to you is God, and should you imbibe them and practically sing, you have been clothed with power. As such, you are on top of the world. Whom did Moses see, when he went to the mountain to receive the Ten Commandments? Besides, when he was called from the burning bush, whom did he see? He saw none, hence he asked, Who are you? And God answered and said to him, I am an immortal God. The word has no beginning, likewise God. The word that gets to you daily is God. Take the case of Samuel for instance. One night, Samuel was called by God. But since he knew not who called him, he went to his master, Eli, and asked if he was the one calling him. Eli replied that he should go and sleep, for he was not the one calling him. Later, Samuel was called again and he went to his master again but his master told him that he has not called him. Samuel went back to sleep, but God kept calling him. Hence you are admonished not to harden your heart when you hear his voice. Many do long to see the leader in the vestry. But the question is, all this while have you not been seeing the leader? What then do you intend to see in the vestry? Instead of you allowing someone else to pray for you, you desire to be prayed for by the Father. Are you mentally alright in so doing? You are faithless, and that is why you want to see the Father always. Does it mean that you have hitherto not been seeing the Father? God and man are one. The whites are not satisfied with where they are placed. That is why, if God were not the Word, the whites would have created their set of words. They have tried all they could but to no avail. That is why I tell you, Christ, God and the Holy Spirit are the Word. And everybody constitutes the Word. However, what bothers you now is that, if you are equally the Word, why are you not powerful? A lot of you do not dwell in God, because you are fond of pronouncing vain words, therefore mocking God. All your pronouncements center on, God bless me with a car, wife, husband, house, land, electronics etc. There is a popular saying that everything happens to one according to his faith. Since you are using the word for vain things, you receive vain rewards, whereas, if you were to use the words appropriately, you would have been reaping its yield. At present the Father is communicating with you. And you listen to him with all amount of seriousness, such that you no longer hear what another person talks about. But the question is have you been practicing what the Father has been communicating to you? God has never left us an inch. Rather it is man who has been disregarding him. Man is so faithless that he does not believe in the God which he has not seen. He is looking for the person who would falsely tell him that he is Jehovah God. Seek for God in the Spirit, for by so doing, the Spirit would lead you to the accurate knowledge of truth. God has been communicating with us about what is good and what is worthy of practice. But we have been shunning such directives, since we are in need of a person with a long beard who claims to be God. The trees, stones, eggs, sand, etc. cannot make any pronouncements and such pronouncements become efficacious. That is, why you must be very mindful of what you pronounce and make sure nothing negative comes out of your mouth, for, if you do so it will manifest. That is why a child who is cursed by his mother, father, friends, colleagues etc. hardly prospers. It is to this end too that you do see those who make negative pronouncement meeting failures at all times. Besides, once you curse a person, you would first receive the reward before the cursed person. Hence you are strongly warned not to let any ill word proceed out of your mouth. It is the word you pronounce that condemns and justifies you. So, always use the words that are good, so that you might not be condemned. It was as a result of the blessing which Isaac poured on Jacob, his son, that he, Jacob prospered bountifully. Now, if he were to be cursed by his father, the blessing he received would not have been possible. Also, if Esau was at least accorded a little blessing, would things have been as bad as they were with him? Esau was to go and subject himself to his younger brother, Jacob. He was made to struggle very hard in order that his ways might be opened. Genesis chapter 27 verse 40. Then Esau in response pleaded with the father not to forget him. And since he had tried hard and had not been forgotten by the father, what you are seeing today is a result of that and forgetfulness by God. That is, why you are always asked to speak that which is good. Anyone who does not live by the word of God is dead. The word is the cause and effect of everything. For instance, it is with the word that vision is imparted to people. It is with the word that people are healed and preached to, for their salvation. 
That is why a man of wisdom who claims to be a native doctor would use the word to give solutions to people's problems, but he will also claim to be using the barks of trees, roots, leaves, and other branches of a particular tree. The native doctors always consult with the immortal god and the god of the soil before doing anything. So use this to ascertain that god is the word and it is the word that makes things happen. The efficacy of the word. The word is very powerful and efficacious. That is, why we must be very mindful of whatever comes out of our mouths. For instance, if a charm is prepared to harm a certain man, it would not harm any other person apart from the one it is prepared for. Another instance is that of a chief judge or an army commandant who exonerates a person and declares him discharged and acquitted. Such a person cannot be killed anymore in respect of the crime he was accused. Names like Juju, Death, Ghost, Heads, Abyss etc. do affect the bearers. Hence you hear about people changing their names. In the case of the Virgin Mary's son, the name he bore in his first advent was Jesus the Christ, meaning the Savior. This is, because he came to save. But now he has come in a different form to rule and reign. He has been given a new name. He can no longer be addressed as Jesus. He has come as a king, ruler, leader, lord of lords and king of kings, respectively. Similarly the names the father attaches to you, as well as the positions you are placed in here in this kingdom are of great significance. This is so, for, while a prophet would act as a prophet, a pastor on the other hand would act like a pastor. This is the efficacy of the spoken word of God. The spoken word of God has caused the snake, for deceiving Eve, to be crawling till date. The same thing happens with the pains which women do experience during labor today, for Eve allowing herself to be deceived by the snake. Besides, God cursed man, Adam, thus, because thou hast hearkened unto the voice of thy wife, and hast eaten of the tree, of which I commanded thee, saying, Thou shalt not eat of it, cursed is the ground for thy sake, in sorrow shalt thou eat of it all the days of thy life. Genesis chapter 3 verse 17. And this is happening today. These are the effects of the spoken words. For instance, if God did not utter any word, Adam and Eve would not have suffered any penalty, and mankind would have been at peace. But since he made the pronouncements, they are happening today, accordingly. Furthermore, God foretold Adam and Eve that should they eat of the fruit at the center of the garden, they shall die. And since they ate of it, they died. Beloved, have you now seen the origin of death? God is the creator of death, because, if he did not inform Adam and Eve that they would die should they disobey him, death would not be experienced in the world. God made it clear that the said tree at the center of the garden was of good and evil. If he were to call the tree, the tree of good there would have been no problem. You are fond of cursing people and wishing them evil. This is the cause of all the problems we have in the world today. Being provoked is not profitable. Because during the process you are bound to air out negative, vague, and evil words which gives birth to the problems that confront us. So it is worthy to note that God is the maker and destroyer of all things. Also note that it is because of your negative utterances against people that they become frustrated and wretched and you are the person directly involved in making such people what they are. Read Matthew chapter 12 verses 34 to 37 and Genesis chapter 49 verses 1 to 27. Matthew chapter 12 verses 34 to 37 O generation of vipers, how can ye, being evil, speak good things? For out of the abundance of the heart the mouth speaketh. A good man out of the good treasure of the heart bringeth forth good things, and an evil man out of the evil treasure bringeth forth evil things. But I say unto you, that every idle word that men shall speak, they shall give account thereof in the day of judgment. For by thy words thou shalt be justified, and by thy words thou shalt be condemned. Matthew chapter 12 verses 34 to 37. Genesis chapter 49 verses 1 to 27. And Jacob called unto his sons, and said, Gather yourselves together, that I may tell you that which shall befall you in the last days. Gather yourselves together, and hear, ye sons of Jacob, and hearken unto Israel your father. Reuben, thou art my firstborn, my might, and the beginning of my strength, the excellency of dignity, and the excellency of power, and stable, as water, thou shalt not excel, because thou wentest up to my father's bed, then defiledst thou it, he went up to my couch. Simeon and Levi are brethren, instruments of cruelty are in their habitations. 
O my soul, come not thou into their secret, unto their assembly, my honor, be not thou united, for in their anger they slew a man, and in their self will they did down a wall. Cursed be their anger, for it was fierce, and their wrath, for it was cruel, I will divide them in Jacob, and scatter them in Israel. Judah, thou art he who thy brethren shall praise, thy hand shall be in the neck of thine enemies, thy father's children shall bow down before thee. Judah is a lion's whelp, from the prey, my son, thou art gone up, he stooped down, he couched as a lion, and as an old lion, who shall rouse him up. The scepter shall not depart from Judah, nor a lawgiver from between his feet, until Shiloh come, and unto him shall the gathering of the people be. Binding his bowl unto the vine, and his asses cold unto the choice vine, he washed his garments in wine, and his clothes in the blood of grapes, his eyes shall be red with wine, and his teeth white with milk. Zebulun shall dwell at the haven of the sea, and he shall be for an haven of ships, and his border shall be unto Zidon. Isachar is a strong ass couching down between two burdens, fifteenth and he saw that rest was good, and the land that it was pleasant, and bowed his shoulder to bear, and became a servant unto tribute. Dan shall judge his people, as one of the tribes of Israel. Dan shall be a serpent by the way, an adder in the path, that pinned the horse heels, so that his rider shall fall backward. I have waited for thy salvation, O Lord. Nineteen dead, a troop shall overcome him, but he shall overcome at the last. Twenty out of Asher his bread shall be fed, and he shall yield royal dainties. Naphtali is a hind let loose, he giveth goodly words. Joseph is a fruitful bough, even a fruitful bough by a well, whose branches run over the wall. The archers have sorely grieved him, and shot at him, and hated him, but his bow abode in strength. And the arms of his hands were made strong by the hands of the mighty God of Jacob, from thence is the shepherd, the stone of Israel, smiley face, even by the God of thy father, who shall help thee, and by the Almighty, who shall bless thee with blessings of heaven above, blessings of the deep that leaf under, blessings of the breasts, and of the womb, the blessings of thy father have prevailed above the blessings of my progenitors unto the utmost bound of the everlasting hills, they shall be on the head of Joseph and on the crown of the head of him that was separate from his brethren. Benjamin shall ravin as a wolf, in the morning he shall devour the prey, and at night he shall divide the spoil. Those who are from the tribes of Simeon and Levi are bound to be violent and destructive because of the pronouncement that was made on them. They are those who feel uncomfortable and dissatisfied when peace prevails in all situations. You may be charitable to those who are from said tribes, but in the end they will kill you for no tangible reason. When you see this happening do not blame such people, for they are not the cause but the manifestation of the word spoken about them. There is a specific tribe from which kins do emerge. The iron rod can only be handled by a kin, and since our Lord Jesus Christ came as a savior but not as a kin, he did not handle any iron rod. But now the kin who is to rule the entire creation of God along with the angels has come to rule with an iron rod. Anyone who refuses to be subjected to his rulership and leadership has to be crushed like pepper. Following this, the people of the world are claiming that he, the ruler, is not God but Beelzebub. The one who is to rule today with an iron rod has scattered all the satanic groups and principalities of this world. That is why his source of power and identity has eluded the entire world today. The twelve tribes of Israel signify the twelve calendar months of the year. Those who come from the tribe of Reuben are often fornicators, prostitutes, adulterers, and adulteresses. The said people are always ready to marry any woman, irrespective of the woman's appearance, place of origin, relationship with them, etc. Besides, if those in the said group have a very fat sum of money today, they would become poor the next day because of the manner in which they spend the money on women. In short, it is always very rare to see these set of people prosper. Amongst the twelve children of Jacob, Joseph was the most abundantly blessed. That is, why you often see those from the tribe of Joseph being very prosperous. There is nothing which one acquires on his own, rather all that one owns are predestined for him. That was why irrespective of Job's bad conditions and the bad advice people, including his wife, gave him, he did not deny God. Rather he held firmly to him, and in the end, he was blessed abundantly by God. Let it be known, that your date of birth is always the cause of the prevailing conditions in your life. Because a person whose birthday conforms with that of Reuben would toil to the best of his ability without reaping any good reward. 
though he may be rewarded well, he will not use it to accomplish any good thing, until he returns to his former poor state. In the world today, if a person is not deceitful, a liar, and crafty he cannot be a successful lawyer. There is no truthful and straightforward person who could be a successful lawyer in the world today, because he would not be spared by the culprits who often need to be exonerated from their crimes. The things you see in the world are made possible by the spoken word. But you do not understand this very fact. It is the blessing which Abraham poured on Isaac that made Isaac prosperous and in the same vein Isaac blessed Jacob abundantly hence Jacob was prosperous. The spoken words of the father are often very efficacious. If you underestimate his pronouncements, you will have problems. Besides note that you shall know the truth and the truth will set you free, as nominated in the scripture. John chapter 8 verse 32. None of you have known the truth hence you are not free. You have been told to forsake fornication, theft, medication, flesh eating and other sins, and you are not to harden your heart whenever you hear his voice. Hebrews chapter 4 verse 7. But who and how many acclaim brotherhood of the cross and star members abide by these injunctions? None of you is prepared to obey God and also hearken to his pronouncements. That is why it is always very common to hear many of the people claim our God is merciful and he is embodiment of grace. As such, he would save us gratis. But note that the scripture has foretold us that no matter what happens the sinner shall not be saved. The law of retribution is seriously at work in the world. The evil that you commit always lives after you. And as the sword of Goliath killed him, so also shall your abhorrences kill you, unless you are careful and mindful of what proceeds out of your mouth. The scripture has it that thy sins shall find thee out. This means that each person shall pay the price for the sin he or she commits. Beloved, the Old Testament contains all the atrocities and the wicked people one could think of. Some people do learn to be wicked after reading a particular portion of the Old Testament part of the Bible. This is a new era, the era of the Holy Spirit where sinfulness is no longer the order of the day. The true children of God do not take part in politics because of the attendant practice of evil during this period. This exercise is strictly for the worldly people. In Brotherhood of the Cross and Star, sinfulness is not the order of the day that is why most people who cannot exist for a minute without committing sins often revile Brotherhood of the Cross and Star, and do not want to hear anything about it, not to talk of becoming members. These people are of the world. The members of the armed forces, including the police are always taught how to kill, torture, and enslave people. The so-called church goers too are very wicked, because sinfulness is the order of the day in their respective churches. Oftentimes they do kill fellow members who steal yet they go about shouting, Jesus, Jesus, as their personal savior and lord. The so-called church goers are like members of the armed forces. That is why a true child of God would not go to any church, for he knows fully well that the churches are based on falsehood. And that is why you find the so-called distinguished members of the Orthodox churches spending large sums of the money they have, so that they might disrupt the glory of this kingdom. What Lucifer did is exactly what these people are doing today. And the wrath of God which Lucifer suffered is exactly what they are experiencing today. All the church doors in this world are not righteous. They are all members of one secret cult or the other. Once you attempt to expose them, they see to it that you are eliminated. For instance, when Pope John Paul I was made to know that some of his distinguished members were members of secret societies, he was not pleased, but in his attempt to expose those people he was killed. But this kingdom is a new kingdom of God hence no iota of sin is allowed in. And for your information, it is high time the unrighteous set of people in Brotherhood of the Cross and Star are made to face the wrath of God as a consequence of their unrighteousness. The entire world would have long perished, but because of the grace and mercy and love of God, he decided to establish the kingdom for us. This explains why the knowledge of God is said to surpass that of man. Now, having been told of the aftermath of indulging in sin, and making vain and negative and evil occurrences, would you further indulge in sin and allow bad words to proceed out of your mouth? Read John chapter 16 verses 13 to 15. Howbeit, when he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth, for he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he will show you things to come. 14 He shall glorify me, for he shall receive of mine, and shall show it unto you.
15 All things that the Father hath are mine, therefore said I, that he shall take of mine, and shall shew it unto you. The except above has openly declared that all that the Father has are Christ's. You prodigal son, why have you not declared that all that the Father has are yours? You have not made such declaration, because you are seeking for your own glory and empire. Your main aim is to come into brotherhood of the cross and star and go out with whatever you could grasp. But where would you take the said thing to? Do you not know, that the entire creation of God and even you, are brotherhood? This depicts that you are ignorant of, where you are. I am trying to reveal this thing to you, so that you may know, that you come into this world with nothing, and you shall depart with nothing. As such, you should not attempt to steal or claim ownership of one thing or the other. But when you die you leave such things on earth and return alone to the world beyond. We are all God's servants, therefore, all the things that we have are for his services. It is not the flesh that constitutes God, but the word. So many people today have come to the actual realization of the significance of speaking that which is good. That is why a lot of preachers today do enjoin their followers to do what they preach, and not what they do. This also explains why it is not uncommon to see perpetual thieves, native doctors, soothsayers, dupes, etc. preaching to people to shun such sinful ways. But when they are asked why they themselves are not purged, they attribute it to poverty, hardship and frustration. This is to show you that the word is God. You have been preaching to people to refrain from sin. Why are you still indulging such sin? This shows you that you feel like forsaking sin but the Father has not given you the ability to do that. The Father has come personally, and since you believe in him you are saved. You are no longer of the world. Brotherhood of the cross and star is from above. And as many as embrace it are saved. But as many as conspire against it are bound to receive God's wrath. Never pray for people to see the goodness of God, for all those who need such blessings through their good deeds shall receive same. Any visioner who says you are being oppressed by witchcraft, should be put into fervent prayer, for he does not know what he is talking about. This I say, because brotherhood of the cross and star children are on top of the world, hence they cannot be harmed or oppressed by any elementary spirit. It is to this end that the people of the world are still researching and investigating what brotherhood of the cross and star is. If those who have known many hidden things in this world and have tried to acquire one power or the other in the world stand to testify about Brotherhood of the Cross and Star you will be astonished. For instance, Brother Aquila once testified that he initiated into 36 secret cults, and that he had several numbers of juju that were prepared for him by several native doctors. But he did not have power, until he was called into Brotherhood of the Cross and Star. The people of the world are so faithless that they spare no time in consulting native doctors, soothsayers, etc. for protective charms. But Brotherhood of the Cross and Star members knowing too well that they have a father hardly practice such unholy acts. Hence in Brotherhood of the Cross and Star, everything is done by God through our Lord Jesus Christ. That is, why I never one day enjoin you to go to the riverbank to pray, burn incense, or light candle or use perfume etc. But as many as are in the world have been saved, except the child of perdition, according to the scripture. Read John chapter 17 verses 8 to 10, For I have given unto them the words which thou gavest me, and they have received them, and have known surely that I came out from thee, and they have believed that thou didst send me. I pray for them, I pray not for the world, but for them which thou hast given me, for they are thine. And all mine are thine, and thine are mine, and I am glorified in them. It is worthy to note that we are all one, hence all that belongs to the Father equally belongs to us and vice versa. Our amour of war is the word. But the people of the world are in lack of it, because they do not value it. Once the Father makes any pronouncement, saying is bound to manifest. Now things are manifesting, as they should, and yet people are asking you what the Father says. The Father has been constantly showering his peace on all men on earth. As such, things will eventually be streamlined in the world. The Father is all and in all. He is not the one to appoint the one to rule a state or a nation. Rather it is your handiwork and your behavior that avails you the position you find yourself in. This is why the Father tells you to be brotherhood by example. Some of the governors who forced themselves into positions through rigging, elections, are today lamenting because of the external pressures mounted against them. 
They are seriously duped and deceived by the acclaimed native doctors, soothsayers, mermaid worshippers, oracle consultants, etc. But if they come here, accept baptism and hand over themselves to God wholeheartedly, their problems are bound to cease. These governors have deputies, and if these deputies fail to practice what the governors practice, worship, they can be removed from office. Any secret society members who wish to come into Brotherhood of Cross and Star is often ejected from such a society or is made to resign. Note that once you deny any secret society or resign from it, you are bound to be killed without delay. This accounts for why most of the secret society members who wish to embrace Brotherhood of the Cross and Star are afraid. It also shows that sin has engulfed the whole world, but for God's love, mercy, and pre-pronouncement, that he would never again destroy the world, the world would have been since destroyed. So you need to obey God, practice his injunctions and serve him, however it is a fact that God shall destroy all sinners at the appointed time. Let my peace and blessings rest and abide with the entire world, now and forevermore, Amen. Thank you Father, 